Hi, in this video, I want to show you a book that you can use to teach yourself probability and statistics. It's called Probability and Statistical Inference by Robert V. Hogg and Elliot A. Tannis. And this is a good book. It's a pretty good book. It's got answers. It's got explanations. It's a solid textbook. It's an older one. I don't know if it's still in print or if you can still find it. I don't know how popular it is. I've done zero research on that regard. I've had this book for a long time. I'll try to leave a link in the description after I make this video in case you want to pick up a copy. So it's good for self-study. The prereq, according to the authors, is that you know some calculus. So you need calculus before jumping in. And the reason they say that is because certain things in this book require calculus. But not everything requires calculus, okay? So you can use this book to learn a lot of statistics and probability. Written by Robert V. Hogg, University of Iowa, and Elliot A. Tannis, Hope College School. And then here's the copyright. 1977, printed in the United States of America. So uh, it's it's been a while. It's been a while since this book came out. I don't know if there's a newer edition. Here's the preface. It just basically tells you, you know, about the book. This book is designed for use in a course having from three to six semester hours of credit, such as a three-hour course for one semester, a two-quarter course, or a three-hour course for the full academic year. No previous study of statistics is assumed, and a standard two-semester course in calculus should provide an adequate mathematical background. Should it? <laughs> so it's a math book. You know, you're going to run into sticking points, um, but it's a great textbook. Great textbook. And again, you can learn certain things without calculus. So it's just for some of the stuff. If you're in college today and you're taking a course on probability theory or statistical theory, uh, this book should cover probably everything you're covering and more. So it's pretty good for that. It's pretty good as a supplement. It starts with probability, random experiments and random variables, algebra of sets, properties of probability, additional. So it goes pretty quickly. Look at that Bayes formula, independent events. And then distributions of the discrete type. Ah, the Poisson. I bet you don't know what Poisson means in French. It means fish, I'm pretty sure. Um, someone told me that, and I've never actually verified it, but I'm pretty sure Poisson means fish in French. I, had, I was teaching statistics one day, and someone, um, they said, oh, that means fish in French. And I was like, really? You speak French? And she's like, yeah. So apparently I learned some French. Empirical distributions. Distributions of the continuous type. Exciting. I'm starting to get excited here. I'm starting to get goosebumps. I gotta give it a whiff. This brings back a lot of memories. Just gotta smell it here. Oh, it smells so marvelous. Basic sampling distribution theory. This book has a really good smell. Distribution free confidence intervals. Interesting. This is cool, right? Distribution free confidence intervals. This is something that um it's just interesting. You don't see that sometimes. Estimation with normal models. Test of statistical hypotheses. Multivariate uh, distributions. Chi-square test of models. Analysis of variance. And a brief theory of statistic statistical inference. And then you have some answers to selected exercises. Let's jump. Let's, ju let's just go right away to this because I want to look at it. Page 179. Confidence intervals. I haven't made a confidence interval for my YouTube channel in a long time. So I actually do have statistics videos on this channel. Uh, many of you probably don't know because this channel is really, really old. Really old YouTube channel. And I have thousands of videos. It's ridiculous. And I have a lot of stats videos. But most of the ones, in fact, all of the confidence interval ones I have, they use software to do the problems. They don't do it by hand. Maybe I should make some where I do things by hand for people. People always ask, how do I do it without the software? And I never really have an answer because I haven't made the video yet. <laughs> confidence intervals. For percentiles, that's cool, right? That's not something you see every day. Something that is often studied uh, in standard class. What else we got? Go to confidence intervals for means. This is typically what you see. Confidence intervals for me. And they do it all by hand. Do it all by hand. Qualities you create. 
and it goes through and it explains everything. The um, modern books, like if you take a course in statistics today, what they're going to do is for the confidence interval, typically you'll, sometimes you do it by hand, um, but a lot of times, a lot of courses, they use software. And so they just use the software and the software gives you the answer and you spend more time on like interpreting the results. Like here you have some data, you know, do something with it and say something meaningful about it. And that's typically what um, the focus is, is when you're, when you're using statistics. Like if you want to use statistics to, you know, solve some business problem, um, typically what you do is you have to like, you know, look at the problem and then um, try to see how you can apply what what you know from statistics to that specific problem and try to figure out what 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 are the best tools that you can use to to attack that particular statistical problem can you solve that problem and you know is statistics necessary and how much is necessary estimation with normal models likelihood estimation here we go more confidence intervals for means Here's the normal. It looks like the beautiful, right? That's the T distribution. Here it says, let big T have a little T distribution with 14 degrees of freedom. Find a constant C such that the probability, and they have that probability there saying it's 0.9. Go through and draw some pictures. So it does use a lot of heavy mathematics, multivariate distributions. The correlation coefficient, this is something that is also studied uh, in statistics so like in a basic introductory course but again you wouldn't do any of this by hand you would just use so you're seeing a reoccurring theme here is that all of this is done by hand with formulas it's with calculus it's with inequalities this is this is a mathematical statistics book, very different from other statistics books that you might in the real world people use oh look at this this is beautiful got some regression going on here look at that yeah that's pretty this looks like um a regression line i mean it's sampling from bivariate distributions but we're just looking at a regression line here the best fitting line and this is interesting because you know the more dots you have and the closer they are to the line the better your estimate and statistically we can quantify that um so that's that's pretty cool, right? Statistics lets, allows you to quantify that. If you have dots that are really far away and there's not a lot of them, that's not as good. That's not uh, the model is not as good as where you have lots of dots and they're close to the line. The model is better, obviously. So, yeah. And statistics takes takes that into account. So whether you not whether or not you have a uh, significant linear correlation or not will depend on both the number of dots and how close they are to the line which is kind of interesting. Yeah, statistics, it, the math actually takes that into consideration, which I think is cool. Yeah, lots of exercises. This reminds me of the modern books with all these exercises, right? So if you, a modern version of this book would be the book by um, Wackerly and Mendelhall. I always recommend that book. And if I remember, I'll try to leave a link in the description. The great thing about that book is that you can often find solutions manuals. You just have to make sure that you get um, the right one that goes with your edition of the book, but and it does have answers. Let me show you. Got, got answers. One of the great things about this book, and this is going to sound weird, is the index. So, let's say you buy this book and let's say you read it for twenty minutes and you put it away and then you never use it again. Well, at least you learned something. And honestly, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much you end up paying for the book, but twenty minutes of knowledge. Um, pretty good and then you put it away and then 10 years later you look something up in the index the index is very good it's got a lot of things in it that you might need uh, at some point yeah nice book um, good examples a lot of mathematics let's look at the Poisson distribution let's let's look let's look that up in the index see what we find Poisson Poisson page 79, 169, and 423. So let's take a look at that. I guess 79 is when it's introduced probably because it's the first time it's mentioned in the index. Hopefully it's not like introduced in an exercise. I hate when they do that. Like they introduce some concept, you go to the index and it's like some exercise. 
they define the Poisson distribution. There's no example, and then I've had books do that with certain things. It's not a pleasant experience. The Poisson distribution. Mm -mm. I spent a lot of time working with this. Um, I took a course in grad school called Stochastic Processes, like a very high-level course, like 7,000 level or something ridiculous. And most of our homework problems involve the Poisson distribution. We use the, uh, the book by Ross, which is Stochastic Processes. Let the number of changes that occur in a given continuous interval be counted. We have an approximate Poisson process with parameter lambda greater than zero. If the following are satisfied, the numbers, the numbers of changes occurring in non-overlapping intervals are independent. The probability of exactly one change in a sufficiently short interval of length h is approximately lambda h. The probability of two or more changes in a sufficiently short interval is essentially zero. Yeah, very well done. <laughs> Great. Oh, too much fun. Too much fun. Let's let's go back and let's go back to the Poisson. See if you can see some of the math here. Go through and have a formula. The random variable X has a Poisson distribution if its PDF is of the form, and there's your formula. The one you always use so much in the exercises. It is easy to see that f of x enjoys the properties of a PDF because clearly. It's non-negative, so f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all x. And it sums. You sum it, you get one. That's pretty cool. That's sum. So they pull out e to the negative lambda there because it's independent of x. You see how there's an x equals zero there? That's part of, that's the index of summation is x. But the e and the lambda, they have nothing to do with x, so you can actually pull it out of the sum. And then that sum, if you know some calculus, um, that sum is e to the lambda, right? In calculus, you might uh, see it a different way, okay? Uh, it'll look a little bit differently, but the variables, if you think about it, it's the same thing, right? In calculus, let me just show you. I've got a pen here. I'll show you really quick. And I'm just, I'll write big so you can see. So normally, we have e to the x, okay? And that's equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Okay, that's what we have. But here in this example, we have the sum, and okay, we have the sum as x goes from zero to infinity, okay, of lambda to the x over x factorial. So you just do some substitutions here, just think about what's happening, right? So basically your n, your n is x, right? So if I put an n here, put an n here, I put an n here, it almost looks the same now, you see? And then instead of lambda, it's x, right? So this is just e to the lambda. So that's the idea with, with this. So Calc 2, this is Maclaurin series. This is uh, the Maclaurin series for e to the x. It's the Taylor series centered at zero, basically, for e to the x, called the Maclaurin series. It converges absolutely to e to the x for all x. So we're using that um, just in the verification process here to verify that um, this is the PDF, the probability distribution function for the Poisson distribution. So you use some calculus uh, in this book. And that's it's just right there, right? Basic Calc 2 stuff. There's a lot of integration. Yeah, here's some integration. Well, not yet. Yeah, some integration to do. Rules, you see but yeah um so i think this is a good book if you can get it at a good price uh, i'd recommend getting it i collect uh math and science books and other books as well i'm a collector of books and this is one that's really good it's a, it's an older book it's really good um it's not perfect it's a textbook you're gonna get stuck you're gonna struggle but a nice book it's probability and statistical inference by hog and tennis and i just got to give it a whiff excuse me ah oh, it smells so good Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like, share. And I do have stats videos on my channel. If you're trying to learn stats, uh, just go to like the, my main channel and there's like a little search box. And I think you can just search for statistics and you'll get stuff. I never tell people to search for videos on my channel, but you can. I have so many. So yeah, I'll try to post more stats videos too. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like bad statistics out there in the world, uh, bad interpretations and stuff like that. And 
I'm not saying like I'm a statistics guru and I know everything. I'm just saying, you know, you, there's a lot of bad mathematics out there. And I think it's not people's fault. I think it's just the subject is hard. And so there's a lot of confusion surrounding the subject. So, yeah. Anyways, enough of a rant about statistics. It's a beautiful subject and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.